What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the launch of five new accessories from Aperture. Today, we're going to be talking about accessories that range from the Amaran lights all the way up to the Nova P300C. We're going to be talking about how this actually changes, how this is a new wave of lighting control. We're also going to talk about how these accessories work, everything you need to know about them, what they allow you to accomplish, and of course, we're going to be talking about pricing and availability as well. So, if you are watching this live stream, number one, uh, I should be in the chat below if everything is going proper and well today, as well as the rest of the after team, we're all going to be here in the chat as well to help answer any questions that you have. So if I don't cover this in the actual chat, make sure you leave that comment down below and future Ted will be able to help answer that or future Brandon or future Ian or whoever is in that chat being able to help answer questions. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions about the actual products, how they work, the designs, be sure to join the Aperture user group or over on Facebook. We're gonna be able to do a full in-depth walkthrough of the products as well afterwards to be able to show you all the specifications and details that you need to know. But for 99% of people, this should be most of what you need. So without much further ado, let's get started. Five new accessories from Aperture, let's do this. Speed, versatility, control, quality. At Aperture, we know that great lighting isn't just how bright a fixture is or how many colors it can produce. It's where you take it, how you shape it, and how hard and soft you can make it. That's why we're excited to bring you five new accessories designed for flexibility. Meet the Aperture 2-Bay Power Station. Inspired by the 600D, this accessory converts V-mount or gold mount power into a 48-volt DC output, so users can now use batteries with the Nova P300C and Amaran fixtures like the Amaran 100, 200, D, and X. Weighing in at under three pounds, the Power Station is a lightweight solution that can not only be mounted to any stand via lightning clamp, but also can increase the range of your fixture by using the included 3 meter long XLR cable. Next up is the Nova P300C Barn Doors. This accessory brings fundamental control to an already powerful fixture. Designed to reduce spill, this four-leaf accessory weighs under four pounds and slides directly into the Nova's accessory slot. Each set of barn doors also includes hook and loop fabric siders to black out reflections and even a carrying case for shooting on location. But when it comes to light shaping ability, we're just getting started. The F10 Fresnel is the first Bowens modifier to match the quality of a traditional Studio 2K. Using 10 inches of pure glass, this modifier gives filmmakers the throw of a hard light while still capturing classic and soft quality needed for dramatic expression. It also uses Aperture's helicoid focus design for ultimate control. With a simple turn of a wrist, users can easily adjust the beam angle of their light from 15 to 45 degrees. And when combined with the power of Aperture 600D Pro, this modifier maximizes output, pushing over 29,300 lux at three meters away and bringing its brightness to that of a 1.2K HMI Fresnel. Next up is the F10 Barn Doors, an eight leaf accessory specially designed to shape light from the F10 Fresnel. Together, the combination brings modern innovation to a classic Hollywood fixture. And with its heavy-duty all-metal construction, the F10 barn doors are built to last through even the most difficult work environment. With not only a safety cable, but also a pre-designed mounting point for maximum security. And finally, our last release continues our history of designing light modifiers. Introducing the Light Dome SE our lightest, most portable softbox to date, weighing in at just two pounds and spanning 33 inches of soft lighting, this modifier turns any fixture into the ultimate key light for content creators. Designed with 16 fiberglass rods, the Lightzone SE creates a circular light, a perfect eye light that has been carefully designed to create the most beautiful reflections possible. 
It also includes two types of diffusion and a fabric control grid, giving creatives the ability to customize and discover what light quality works best for them. And with a compact carrying case, you can rest easy, knowing that your lighting kit will always travel and arrive safely on set. Alrighty, welcome back. Let's do this. Five new accessories starting off. Let's go. So today we have a presentation. We're talking about aperture accessories and what they actually add to your lighting kit. So speed, versatility, control, and quality. Now, starting off, we're talking about the two bay battery power station. Now, we have talked about this in the past, but let's walk through exactly what this means as far as how it actually works with the quality of the lights and what lights it's actually compatible with. So compatibility, let's start with that. The Nova P300C. So again, this is one of our studio grade lights out there. For all the people that have used that, it's been very exciting to see all the high-end sets that this has been going on to. Very, very cool to be able to see a lot of our favorite DPs, a lot of our favorite gaffers out there using this light to do amazing things. Now on the high end, this two-bay battery power station is going to be able to allow V-mount and gold-mount batteries to now work and power the P300C. And on the consumer end, what's cool about this is we also designed this product to actually work with the Amran 100 and the Amran 200 series of lights. So for all the people out there, no matter what range of aperture user you are, we think the two-bay battery power station has something useful for you. So first off, let's talk real quick about what the two-bay battery power station actually works with as far as devices. So behind me, you can see I've already got a Nova P300C. Very popular light, very exciting to see how many high-end sets this light has been going on to. Now, on the bottom here, you can see what we are talking about here as far as accessories. Now, this real quick, if we can get the punch in, is the two-bay battery power station. What this is going to do in practice is it takes two V-mount batteries just like this, inverts and changes that power into a 48-volt DC XLR output. So what that means as far as practice is automatically here on the back, you can see my Nova is actually not plugged into main power at all. I am literally patching in 48 volt DC output and I'm getting 100% battery power out of this Nova from these two V-mount batteries. Now, beyond being an inverter, of course, we designed this to be as lightweight, portable, and fast to use. So if I unplug this device here, you can see I'm unplugged here. All I need to do is unclip here, and you can see on the back here, you got something familiar here as well. So you got lightning clamp, which is what we've talked about before. So on the back here, on the same two bay battery station, we've also got lightning clamp here on the back. So if I wanna use lightning clamp, all I need to do is walk over to a different device, say, hey, I now wanna power my Amaran 200D off of battery power. All I need to do is walk in, patch this in. I am now clipped in just like that. And I can actually plug in directly into the Amaran 100 200D because again, three pin XLR, power cables on the back. I am now powering this light off of V-mount or gold mount batteries as well. So as far as the Amaran lights and the P300C go, number one, is the Amaran light series actually powerable via battery? Absolutely, yes, you just need the two-bay battery station. Likewise, if we're talking about the Nova P300C, is it powerable off of V-mount or gold-mount batteries? Yes, among other power solutions, this is one more way that you can actually power this fixture, making it one of the most versatile on set. Now, what is cool about this for a lot of people out there that are wondering is, number one, can the Amaran series be powered off of V-mount power? Yes, it absolutely can be powered off of battery options using the two-bay battery station. Likewise, can the Nova P300C be powered off of V-mount battery power? The answer is yes, absolutely. But to go just one step further, because we're talking about a power inverter, right? We're talking about something that takes V-mount batteries, converts them into 48-volt DC output. What are the other possibilities with that? So moving on from that, we can actually talk about another light in this series. For a lot of people out there that are familiar with the Ari Sky Panel S60 industry workhorse, right? Amazing light out there. On the back there, that is actually a power inverter, that big brick that you see on the backs. So what's cool about the RSKY Sky panel is that it actually pulls approximately 450 watts of power. Now this battery power station can actually supply up to 480 watts of power, which means that, yes, if you do have two batteries and the two batteries capable individually can supply up to 240 watts of power each, 240 watts of power each combined into 480 watts of power, Yes, this battery power station can actually power a SkyPanel S60 to 100% output. So, people out there looking for solutions from the low to the high end, we are merging that together. We are making this powerful solution available and affordable for you guys. And for the people out there that are wondering about that, we'll of course talk about that at the end. But that's everything about the two-bay battery power station. If you have any more questions about that, leave them in the comments down below. We'll be sure to answer those. But let's keep moving on to our next accessory. Now, next up, we we're talking about the Nova P300C barn doors. So I mentioned it before, but I'm gonna mention it again. It has been mind blowing seeing all the amazing sets, all the super high end work that is being done using the Nova P300C. So 
for P300C fans out there, one of the biggest questions that we keep getting asked, of course, is accessories, accessories. We just released, again, the two-bay battery station. Let's talk about the next thing here, and that's the Nova Barn Doors. So when we talk about barn doors here, let's talk about what's exciting here. Now, they're barn doors, right? How much more exciting could they really be? Uh, I think we have a couple design tweaks here, a couple pieces of feedback that we made sure to listen to that I think can actually excite even the barn doors nerds out there. So starting off the bat, again, traditional four leaf design here, entirely aluminum metal build. But when we actually talk about how these work, number one is that they actually slide immediately into the Aperture native accessory slot. So you can see on the Nova, you've got that accessory slot right here. This slides right in. I don't need any accessory frames or anything like that to make this Jerry Rigger work together. Again, we designed the light, we designed the accessory. This all is compatible. Number two here is one of the biggest kind of pieces of feedback that we heard from a lot of the CLTs, a lot of the console programs, a lot of the gaffers, a lot of the grips that we're talking to is that when we actually use a soft light like this, one of the biggest pet peeves that we constantly hear from the industry is when I put barn doors on a soft light source, one of the hardest things is that we're talking about LEDs that hit a diffusion panel. And when they spread, we're talking about a 120 degree beam angle, meaning that because barn doors need a little bit of space here in between the barn doors and the actual light itself, you get a tremendous amount of light leak here. See, so you can see my hand is significantly far behind the edge of the frame, but just like that, you are seeing a lot of light leak here. And we are in a pretty well-lit room, right? So it's not a big deal. But the problem is, is when you're in a dark space, when you're actually lighting something, you're trying to fill a four by four frame and you just want to hit the frame or you just want to hit the eight by eight, uh, this is a humongous problem. So as far as we know, again, we are probably the first ones to do this. And we're trying to listen to the feedback that people are telling us here. And to us, it seemed incredibly obvious. Well, we have to build something here that's not black wrap, that's not gaff tape, something that's manufactured designed here that will eliminate and solve this issue. So right here on the side, you can see this is a fabric light control grid. This will entirely eliminate the light leak. And when I move my barn doors, because it's fabric, because it's pliable, because it's designed to the exact specifications of the light, this will automatically allow the light to be pliable while eliminating that spill. And likewise, when I wanna move this in, I'm not gonna hear that kind of crinkle that comes from black foil along those lines as well too. So you don't have to worry about the black wrap noise as well. For even the barn doors nerds out there, we think it's something that's exciting. We think automatically from the feedback that we've been getting from a lot of the chief lighting technicians that we talk with, a lot of the grips that we've been talking with, uh, they tell us that's actually pretty darn useful. So something that we're excited to be sharing with everybody. Now, we talked about the Nova barn doors. Let's talk about something a little bit different. Moving on to our third accessory of the day, we are moving on to the F10 for now. I have seen all of the comments on the Aperture user group, people that have been waiting for this accessory to come out. And I think there's no question why, because we know what this accessory can do. But for the people out there that are unfamiliar, let's walk through exactly what the F10 for now means for lights like the 600D Pro. Let's talk about what it actually does as far as the actual build quality. And let's talk about light magnification and how much brighter this light actually makes it compared to a lot of traditional fixtures out there. So starting off, let's talk about the actual build and design of the F10 for now. Now, number one, one of the most exciting things to say here is that this is actually a product that was almost entirely concepted in the Aperture user group, which is very cool because for the Aperture users out there, for a lot of the gaffers, a lot of CLTs that we were talking to, one of the biggest polls in the industry that we've been getting asked for is, I want an LED that can mimic the traditional soft, hard light from a 10 inch Fresnel. For a lot of you guys out there that don't know, a 10 inch Fresnel is basically the exact size of a Studio 2K or a 5K tungsten light. So this right here is actually a 10 inch glass Fresnel. So it will be able to mimic that similar softness. And we'll talk about what that means in just a little bit. So 10 inches. And then again, for a lot of you people out there, the right part of the world, uh, you guys are using 250 millimeters. So this is going to be again, 250 millimeters or 9.8 inches, about the exact same size. Now, moving on from there, this is actually just like the Fresnel 2X, our smaller bones mount Fresnel. This is actually a dual magnification layered design for how we actually use this Fresnel. So what that means is that on the front here, we have actual glass magnifying that light. And on the back here, we also have actual glass magnifying and calming that light one more step further than what's already out there. Now, for what does that actually mean as far as the magnification goes? What that means is that compared to the nearest and the closest and the brightest uh, Fresnel Bowens mount light that we can find out there, this design, because we use those dual optics, will actually double the magnification process of the light that comes out of this light. So for the people out there that have been waiting for the F10 Fresnel, uh, it's absolutely worth the wait and we're excited to be releasing this. And because of this design, again, it does make not only a difference as far as photometrics go, but as far as the actual design and the size of the Fresnel, it's going to make a difference as far as the quality goes. So let's talk real quick about brightness number one. Now, 
with a 600E Pro in an F10 for now, let's do a little math here. We are looking at 29,300 lux at three meters away. And of course, we are talking again about that 10 inch glass for now size, which is going to match the quality of a Studio 2K or a Tungsten 5K. Now, let's talk real quick about what that means when we compare that to industry fixtures out there. Now, on the side here, you can see, again, I've got this helicoid design here. You can see how it actually works. And what's cool about the helicoid design is this is something that we designed here. And the whole point is that you actually don't need an external knob or an external lever to be actually change and focus in your light. On the side here, all I need to do is spin this. As far as the actual space on your truck, this is the exact size that it needs. This is the smallest and most compact design we can get. All I need to do is spin this and I'll get a 15 to 45 degree beam angle spread on a 600D Pro. So if I wanna change this, all I need to do is spin it. And on the side there, just like you saw in the video, you've actually got little markings here that'll tell you how spotted in or how flooded in you are on the actual light. Now, we made a big deal out of that 10 inch for now thing, right? And what's cool about this is that this is actually, again, something that's concepted from the Aperture user group. A lot of you guys asked for this. A lot of CLTs have been asking for this. Let's talk about how close how far we went as far as the actual details to match this with a traditional studio light. Now, on the board here, I've got three traditional Hollywood fixtures out there. Again, some of the best of the best out there. We are honored to even be trying to make this comparison in the first place. We have the RA True Blue T5 Tungsten 5000 watt light. We have RA True Blue D25, which is a 2.5K HMI. And then of course, we've got the classic, the legend out there, Mole Richardson, a 5K tungsten light here. So there are three main features that we're looking at here as far as matching the actual quality of light. Number one, we are talking about size. So as far as the size of the source, we're looking at the diameter of that glass for now. We have a 9.8, 9.84, 9.575, 9.875. And of course, for our light, we are looking at again, a 9.8. We've literally gone to the nth degree to make sure that this matches the exact size of that studio for now out there. All right, so moving on from the actual diameter of the glass here, we're talking about scrims, right? So an industry standard way to be able to control our light. We have singles, doubles, half scrims, for instance, is one of the things that we get asked for a lot, right? And for people out there that don't know what a scrim is, let's talk about it real quick. This is basically a way to be able to control your light by dropping in little nets that'll actually be able to control and absorb light and be able to make sure that the actual output that you get is controlled in the same way. But one of the tools that we haven't been able to use up until now with a lot of LED units in particular, especially modular LED units where I can switch out the for now, is a half screen, which means I can actually drop that in. And if I want half of the light on the top or half of the light on the bottom or the side, I can actually cut that light using one of these tools right here. Now, what's cool is that because we actually match the diameter of these lights to that degree, yes, the 600D with the F10 for now combination actually accepts industry standard 13 inch scrims. So this is one more feature that we're excited about because not only is it a quality of light that you're used to, but it's already a feature set and actual tools of control that you already are aware with as well. But let's talk real quick about what this means. What are the advantages over kind of a traditional system here? Well, number one, we're talking about LED and we're talking about a modular design. So not only is your 600D Pro your point source, your light that can be this small, giving you incredibly hard shadows. Not only can it fit into a five foot or an eight foot octobank and be your softest source on set, but now with the F10 Fresnel, you've actually now got a traditional studio Fresnel look that you can now punch through at what is a fraction of the weight that's already on the market. So when I look at the weight of here, I'm jumping to that second row right away. You can see 26 pounds, 34 pounds, 33 pounds. And right here, we're coming in at 18.7, almost half the weight as far as the industry competitors. So one of the big things I wanna say here is we are absolutely not as bright as a 2.5K HMI, right? Please do not watch this video and walk away and think that this is the comparison that we're trying to make here. But when we talk about a 600D Pro with an F10 for now, one of the things that I've made very clear before, and I'm gonna say it again, is that natively LEDs have a very ultra wide beam angle. Now this is in comparison to HMIs, which tend to have a ultra narrow beam angle. And one of the problems is that when you try to convert the light, there's actually a lot of light loss that happens in the process, especially through the optics. So uh, what you'll find is that when you try to compare LEDs to HMIs, a lot of the time when you're in the spotted mode, you'll see that the HMIs are gonna win. But when you go to a wider mode, you'll actually see that LEDs can compete very competitively. So let's talk real quick. And you can see right there how we match up to those 5Ks, but I'm gonna show you in a different chart real quick how we compare first to 2Ks, then to 5Ks. Number one, we're talking about industry standard 2K lights out there. We have the RE ST2, which is a 2000 watt tungsten light. We have the RE D12, which is a 1.2K HMI, again, at flood. Again, we're talking about flood here. And then three, we're talking about a Mole Richardson 2K here. Again, 4,000, 7,000, 4,000. The 600D Pro with an F10, we're actually coming in at full flood, 11,440 lux. 
Now, let's go one step further beyond that. If we go one step further, let's talk about those 5Ks that we were talking about before. We've got the RAT5, which is the 5,000 watt light, tungsten, of course. The RED25, which is a 2.5K HMI light. And then finally, we've got the third light here. We've got the Moore Richardson 5K, which is a 5,000 watt tungsten light. And again, I'm not saying that we're as bright as a 5,000 watt tungsten light or a 2.5K HMI, but when we talk about flooded lights here, we're talking about, again, not 120 degrees, not six degrees. We're talking about something a little bit closer to 45 degrees, something in the middle as far as our beam angle goes. You'll see that the combination is actually pretty competitive. We're looking at 12,000, 13,000, 10,000. We are coming in again at 11,440. So very comparable as far as brightness goes. We are not there yet, but for a lot of people out there that need that punch, we think that this should be more than enough for a lot of you guys. And if it's not enough, hang tight. We're still making something bigger. Okay, so moving on from there, let's talk about our fourth accessory here. We're getting to the end here. In the front of here, you've already seen it before, but we're talking about the barn doors that go onto the F10 for now. These are the F10 barn doors. Again, barn doors, what can be exciting about them? Well, actually, I think quite a lot. Let's talk real quick about how this works as far as the actual build quality. So number one, as far as the build goes, we are talking about a full aluminum metal build here as far as the barn doors go. And for people out there that are watching this and saying, whoa, those doors are huge. Why are they so large? Uh, the reason for that is because from feedback and from expertise and from knowledge and from having made these lights for a long time, one of the biggest things that I wanna to emphasize to users and for a lot of technicians out there is that you know this, when you have a larger source, you need larger flags or larger shapers to actually be able to shape that light and control that light. So that is the reason why, especially when you have soft lights, you'll see people will walk in flags or they'll walk in uh, V-frames or flea flats or something like that to actually be able to cut the light that comes out of here. As far as the actual barn doors go, again, we are not designing this for cosmetic use. We are designing this for professional use. We're designing this based on experience, which means that to actually be able to cut a 10 inch glass Fresnel, that studio look, look out there, you actually need studio sized barn doors out there that will extend and protrude far enough to actually be able to go in and cut and give you, as you can see on my shirt right there, hard lines, hard shadows that actually cut out. We are not talking about LED panels out there with super short barn doors that are entirely cosmetic that people think do things. This is actually something that's designed for actual use to actually be able to cut and shape that light and hold everything all together. Now, beyond that, we talked about the metal build. We talked about how the actual size works and complements the actual Fresnel, but we've also got eight leaf barn doors here. So you can see, I can actually slide this out. And just like that, I actually can get a full box shape if I wanna be able to shape in my light like that. And if I wanna be able to collapse this in, all I need to do is just push that in and these will actually be able to close in just a little bit tighter. So everything is here is actually built and based off of actual feedback that we've gotten from lighting technicians in real use. And of course, uh, this is of course the design that we're designing here for the F10 for now. Now, beyond the actual barn doors though, we actually got to talk about another things that we ship with the actual design. So we have the eight leaf design that we talked about here. We talked about how it matches the size of traditional barn doors for good reason, because this is actually what you need to shape that light. Now, moving on beyond that, we talked about the industry build quality. Again, these are designed to be robust. These are entirely metal, designed to last and be rugged on workhorse sets. And then finally on the side here, you're gonna see we've actually got the safety cable design in here. So for a lot of you people out there that are wondering, of course, we are designing this to be safe. We're trying to design the tools that make sense for actual high-end use as well too. You're gonna to see here for a lot of you guys that are familiar with studio traditional Fresnels, you'll know that they'll usually have that chain. It's a safety chain to make sure that if this set of uh, barn doors falls off the light for whatever reason, God forbid it won't hit your talent, it won't hit a member of your crew, it won't injure someone. Uh, in the same way that we designed this as well too, we have a safety chain here. We're not using literal chain, right? This doesn't need to look like an ATM chain. This is 2021, we can do a little better than that. Uh, this is an entirely metal chain here that'll actually slip on. It's designed to be robust while still being as slim and lightweight as possible while keeping safety in mind. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about with the barn doors, again, what can be exciting about barn doors? Uh, well, one for a fact could be that they actually ship with one more additional tool and that is the negative reflector here. So I've got one in my hand right here and the way that this works is very simple. On the back here, I've got my Bowens mount. I can snap this on directly onto my 600D. And what's cool is that this will actually accept and this uses the front side here to actually be able to accept the barn doors natively onto the negative reflector. Now, because this is an entirely black design here, what that allows me to do is that because this is not silver, now the source of my light is actually just the size of that tiny little hole there, meaning that I now have the smallest possible point source light here, the smallest possible light here. And when I shape that light using barn doors or something like that, I can get incredibly, incredibly hard shadows from anywhere, any distance. So, you have now a 600 watt LED light 
with a negative reflector that can make incredibly sharp lines to cut through any scene, cut through any frame in any way that you need there as well. So this all ships all together with the safety chain and the barn doors uh, ready to go. Something that we're extremely excited about and something that we've already seen go onto a lot of high-end sets just through our beta testing program by itself. So something that we're very excited about and something that is coming very soon. Finally, our last accessory here that we're gonna be talking about is the Light Dome SE. And this one is really important because as I said before, for the content creator community out there, we have a separate team of engineers, the Amaran engineers that are dedicated to creating the perfect accessories and the perfect lights just for you guys. So again, you guys have different needs than a lot of the high-end technicians. And for you guys out there, one of the biggest questions that we've been getting asked is, how do I upgrade the Light Dome for my lifestyle? So the Light Dome SE is what we think is really the perfect diffusion material for what you guys are looking for and what you guys are trying to get done. And when we talk about the Light Dome SE, let's walk through the actual features here. Number one, we are talking about a 82 centimeter or 33 inch diameter soft diffusion tool, which means that yes, this is literally inches apart from a Light Dome Mark II. So for a lot of you people out there that are looking for that light, this is going to give you a lot of that same size, the same softness, the same quality. It's also got the same two front diffusers, which means that you've got a 1.5 stop and a 2.5 stop diffusion material, meaning that if you want your light to be super soft, or you want to maximize output, you've now got both solutions here available and ready to run as well with the Light Dome SE. Similarly to the Light Dome Mark II, we've got a circular design, which means that if you were trying to film someone and you actually see the catch light, the reflections in someone's eyes, you're actually going to see the most organic shape possible. Circular catch lights, which are beautiful and kind of more aesthetically pleasing. Next up, we've got the actual build in the design. Unlike the Light Dome Mark II, this does not have a rapid build, but what that does mean is that this will actually use 16 fiberglass rods if I need to constantly build and break these light domes however I need to take them. These will be portable, fast, and ready to build and break on the go and ready to move on. Now, next up, we're gonna talk about the last feature that I think all the light domes already have, but we just wanna make sure that you know that the Light Dome SE already has this feature. It comes with the lighting control grid ready to go. So if I'm trying to set up a light, and I think one of the most classically kind of cinematic talking head setups that you're trying to go for is I wanna light my subject, I want my background to be a little bit darker, right? For you people out there, We've got the grid right there that'll control the light, shape the light, make sure the light just hits your subject and doesn't spill and splash all over all the walls, keeping it controlled and in that way that you want it to look. Now, finally though, let's talk about what makes the Light Dome SE different than the other Light Domes that are on the market. Number one, we are talking about weight. We designed this to be as portable, as lightweight as we can make this fixture go. So number one, we are talking about an entire diffusion system that only weighs 2.2 pounds. Now, for comparison out there, for people that are trying to compare this to the Light Dome Mark II, the Light Dome Mark II comes in at 5.6 pounds in comparison to 2.2 pounds. That is less than 50% of the weight there, designed to be fast and portable and quick. Now, beyond that too, this is also a Light Dome that can pack entirely flat. So if you're going on planes a lot, you're traveling, and you need this to take up the smallest amount of space in your unit, this is actually smaller than the Light Dome Mark I for a lot of Aperture users out there. This actually packs into an even smaller package than the other Light Domes out there. And again, allows you to be able to do this in the most portable and fast way you can. Now, let's talk about real quick how the Light Dome SE is different than a lot of the competitors. So number one, we're talking about how it compares to the Light Dome Mark II as far as weight. Now, when we designed the Light Dome SE, we wanted this to be the fastest, most lightweight diffusion tool that was on the market, which means that compared to a Light Dome Mark II, which weighs 5.6 pounds, the Light Dome SE actually weighs only 2.4 pounds. We're also talking about a Light Dome that can pack entirely flat. So for people out there that are familiar with the Light Dome Mark I, again, removable rods in that same way. This again uses the removable rods format. We had some requests too. Some people wanted that form factor that can pack entirely flat for the people that are traveling all the time, that are flying all the time, that need that diffusion tool to be lightweight and featherweight and something that doesn't wear them down every time they need to move locations. Finally, for people out there that are just wondering, how does this compare to the Light Dome Mark II and the Light Dome Mini II? Here's a quick comparison guide. You can screenshot this. We will also send this out as PDFs as well to make the decision just a little bit easier. But again, you can see right here on the top, there's that diffusion diameter. Again, Light Dome SE is about the size of a Light Dome Mark II. 16 rods, so it's not quite as round as the Light Dome Mark II, but it is very, very round in the actual build. And we'll still give you that round catch light when you're trying to use it. And then finally, for everything else where it matters most, we're making sure that you guys get all the same details that the Light Dome Mark II users out there have. So you get the same lighting control grid, you get the same bones mount, and you also get the same carrying bag and two types of diffusion that work all together as well. Alrighty, so now I think we are finally at the point that we can talk about availability and pricing. And before I get there, I just wanna say, um, as always, 
It is amazing to see the Aperture community grow. It has been super cool to be able to see all the high-end sets that have been using things like the P300C or the 600D. It has been absolutely mind-boggling. We have a bunch of film nerds in the office here. So uh, it has been a dream come true to be able to see people using our higher-end fixtures. And we're so excited to see the accessories make their way on set as well, too. So if you have any questions at all about those, leave them down below. We'll be sure to answer them. Um, likewise, for the people out there that are going to be using, again, the two-bay battery power station with their Amaran lights out there, for people out there that have been looking for a diffusion tool that is perfect for the content creator community out there, for people that have wanted to buy the Aptor stuff, and it's crazy to me, but for people that think the Aptor stuff is starting to get a little bit out of the reach, we're trying to make these tools for you, trying to make sure that they're affordable, that there's things that you can stay a part of the ecosystem and still be able to use things like Sidus Link or wireless mesh control and still be able to get the same quality of light of a lot of those creators that you're watching. So for people out there, I think the Light Dome SE is going to be a really great fit. Um, finally though, I think we should talk about availability and pricing. Uh, it is very exciting to be able to share. I think this is my favorite part of any presentation we do because this is where we get to show how technology has moved forward and how more people have now access to be able to create their vision, be able to do the things that they're passionate about off the bat. So let's talk real quick about the accessories. Here we go. The Nova P300C barn doors. We're talking about 169 USD. Very exciting about that. Now, moving on, we're talking about the battery power station here. Uh, the battery power station is coming in at 179 USD. Now, the reason I think I'm grinning so much about this and why I'm so excited about this is because for people out there that use battery power stations, you guys know, traditionally, a battery power station is easily two times as expensive, usually four times as expensive. Um, and I think this is super exciting because it just goes to show how much technology has advanced, energy has changed, and now more people have access to remote and location shooting than ever before. So for people that are Amaran users out there or P300C users out there, I think this is going to be an awesome product for you guys. For the P300C people out there, if you're waiting, because I know we talked about it in the past, if you're waiting for that four bay battery power station that also charges them, I can't talk too much about that yet, other than you should just know that it is coming and it is something that we're working on and we'll be releasing soon. Let's keep moving on. Let's talk about the next two accessories that we've got here. We've got the F10 barn doors and the F10 for now. We're talking about 139 USD for the F10 barn doors and just 219 for the F10 for now. Again, bringing traditional studio quality light to a lot of people out there and for the traditional people out there that want an LED that actually reacts and plays like the fixtures that you're familiar with. We're super excited to release this because I think it's going to give you all the things that you love about traditional fixtures with a modern twist and with innovation attacked onto that as well. And then finally, for the content creators out there, we got a little bit of everything for everyone today. The last thing for the content creators out there, we are talking about the Light Dome SE. Bring it up. We're talking about under $100 for a light dome. Uh, this is huge for us because I know that there's a lot of content creators out there, especially during this time, people that want to be making home channels, that want to be pursuing their passions, that want to be making small business content. For you people out there, the Amaran series is now with a 100D, we're talking about a $199 light plus a light dome SE, $99. We're talking about something that essentially was the 120D Mark II with a light dome that is now open and accessible for content creators of all levels. So. This is one that we're also really excited. We've said and we promised that as we continued to grow, we would make sure that you guys were able to come along and learn and be able to get better. And that's something that we're sticking to as well. So I think that is everything today. I think we're gonna wrap it up in just a little bit. But let me just say real quick, while we're hanging out here, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Again, I should be in there weirdly watching myself and the entire Aperture team should be in there answering questions and hanging out the entire way. If you're watching this and you're watching this as your first Aperture live stream, uh, thanks for joining us. It's great to see you. If you've been a part of the live streams and a part of the family for a while, I hope you saw a couple of products that were directly created and directly designed by the feedback that you guys talk about. Again, we're not kidding when we say that we really take the serious feedback that we get from the group, that we actually take this and it implements and goes immediately into our products. I think it's one of the things that's allowed us to innovate the way that we have and for you guys out there the loud people out there that say how you feel about the gear uh, thank you for being loud thank you for being awesome because hopefully you're seeing a little bit of that innovation in the products today so without much further ado uh, I am Ted give a round of applause for Giselle behind the camera uh, we got Brando back there who should also be in the comments as well too uh, it is not easy putting on these live streams but uh, thank you so much for tuning in and of course got a lot of new stuff coming up soon. We'll post about it soon. Join the Aperture user group. We're on Aperture Facebook. And of course, we will catch you guys next time.